What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. My name is Travis. In today's video, we're going to be doing another email Q&A. Now this is where I answer as many of your guys' questions within a 15 to 20 minute period, and you guys can look at the 300 while I do so. So let's go ahead and get started. Now our first question comes from Tony. I've been checking out your frag tanks and I want to upgrade my coral quarantine so that the quarantine period for new corals isn't stressful because of this subpar system. I currently have a 20 gallon frag tank cured live rock and a hang in the back filter. My light is a waypoint LED, which I believe may be the weak link in my quarantine system. I want to be able to quarantine LPS and SPS. What are your thoughts on lighting? Would you recommend an AI Prime HD, a Kessel A160, Tuna Blue, or something else? Now, the best way to know I, how the, your uh, lighting is in your quarantine tank is to simply test the PAR. Now, you don't have to go out and buy a PAR meter. You can rent one from like Bulk Root Supply or another company. And... Um, just simply test your par where you're going to have the corals themselves. You're looking between about 250 to 450 is what I like to keep my quarantine tanks at. And then putting racks in there at different levels will allow you to put corals, say, more SPS up top, more LPS down at that 200, 250 range, or even at the bottom of the tank regarding, uh, you know, where, wherever your uh, rag, racks may be. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just test your par and see if that light is uh, working out for you if it is subpar then go ahead and upgrade to something like the ai prime hd i use that on my coral quarantine tank before at least before i sold it and when i get my new tank i'll probably do something similar and um yeah just test to see your par if it, if it is actually your weak link just replace it with something like the ai prime which i definitely definitely like as you can see i i use them on my frag tanks with without any issues so hopefully that answers your question okay so moving on to our next question which is from jack I am very much enjoying your videos and webpage. I'm setting up a 120 gallon tank, and it, but it's taking me a little bit longer than I expected, but that's okay. I'm hoping to have it up and running by mid-June. How long do you recommend I wait before adding corals? I plan on having four to six clowns, a few other fish, but not many at all. And instead of sand, half and half dolomite and crushed coral, if you think that will be good. I also wanted to ask you about lights. I am thinking about purchasing the current USA Orbit bulk package. I will also have a small uh, sump and a four pump doser. I need to know uh, what to dose as well. I do I mean, I don't mean to sound foolish. I have just always wanted to set up a reef tank and I need some advice. I, I'm a 54 year old deputy sheriff, not much money, but can afford to finally splurge on myself and hopefully make this happen. Thanks. Uh, thank you for all your advice and videos. Have a great week or two on a motorcycle and please don't die. Uh, we need you back on YouTube. Thanks again. All right, so uh, yes, definitely live. It's a little bit late on the email, so hopefully you haven't already purchased a bunch of stuff. Uh, I, I really wish that I got to this email a little bit sooner, but with everything, I, I apologize for that, Jack. But all right, so let's go ahead and answer your first question. So it is a 120-gallon tank, and how long should you wait to add corals to a tank? Now, when it comes to adding corals, uh, it really just comes down to you getting through the cycling process. That means you go from ammonia to uh, nitrites, and once uh, those are both gone and you only have nitrates and you're doing water changes to keep those down or macroalgae, uh, you're fine to go ahead and add coral at that point. It would be uh, soft corals, LPS, stuff like that. If you feel confident enough to put SPS like bird's nest or montiporas, which are easier, you can go ahead and add those. But once you get through the cycling process, you're uh, good to go ahead and add coral. And uh, moving on to the next question, what do I think about having the half dolomite and half crushed coral? Uh, that's fine. Um, it, they both help um, buffer the pH, which is good, and, and uh, I don't see any issues with that. Uh, just make sure it's not you're not getting anything too fine. I know that could be an issue with sand because if you get a lot of flow in there, you're hence the reason why I don't like having sand. I love a lot of flow and I can't have both in my tank. So moving on to the next question regarding the current USA Orbit bulk package. I just looked that up and it's actually a package that I just took off a client's tank because it sucked uh, ass. It, <laughs> the guy couldn't grow SPS on. It. He had a small tank. It wasn't even. It was uh, I think a, a 100 gallon tank. It was kind of wide. He had two sets of those lights and the pumps and all sorts of stuff. And he just didn't get enough par. I, mean, I think at the bottom of the tank, which was only uh, about uh, maybe 20 inches, something like that, from the lights, and he wasn't getting sh crap for par. He wasn't. What am I even censoring myself? He wasn't getting shit for par. It was. It was really bad lighting. So we actually took that off and we upgraded to three. Um, oh, what are they? fucking radeon xr 15s and uh, four t5 bulbs which was that retrofit kit kind of the same thing i have over on my 300 gallon in now he grows coral he's growing a lot of algae too because he's got other problems he doesn't he doesn't necessarily take care of but um 
yeah, so yeah, I would pass on that light. It seems like a very expensive package as well, but uh, I mean, there could be different ones. I just did a simple Google search on it and and recognized the lighting. So I would pass on that maybe uh, because it is 120. I would do something if you know. I know you're on a budget. You don't want to spend a lot of money. Uh, try to maybe maybe do an XR15 per section of it. Uh, most 125s have three sections, so you're looking at three lights, um, and that would be something that I would do for a tank like that. Um, at least you'll have the par to grow the coral that you need. Uh, the spread might not be the greatest with three, but it depends on how high you have them and all sorts of stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. And I think that's all the questions. So hopefully you did not buy the Orbit stuff. If you did, um, again, I apologize for getting to the email a little bit later, but hopefully this guides anybody else who is kind of looking at that package and have the similar questions. So, all right, moving on. Okay, next question is from Chris. Hi, I have a quick question about your low boy aquariums. I am from England and it's hard to get a, get the low boy frag tanks here, but I have found the place that does the terrarium version. I noticed one of your videos that you used the terrarium model because it did, they didn't have the frag tank model in stock. Are they built the same and are they able to hold the same amount of water? And have you had any problems? Uh, I will be using mine for a pleco breeding, not coral. I'm sorry to ask, but the Zoomid hasn't returned my emails. All right, so uh, I did use, I, that reminded me, yeah, I did use one of the terrarium ones in place of the uh, frag tank version, and I didn't notice any difference. After putting it in the tank, um, it held water just fine. There wasn't any issues. It's probably one of them that I broke because I broke so many of them uh, since I've started using them. Uh, but, um, yeah, I never noticed any difference. I probably would have remembered if there was anything uh, major that stood out. Uh, they drill just fine. Uh, they hold water, no issues. Um, so if, yeah, if you can get the terrarium version, that's fine. Uh, I b do believe they use the same silicone. I mean, it's black. It looks the same. Um, I would doubt they would use different silicone. That would be my only concern. But again, I use it in my frag systems uh, with no issues. Hopefully uh, that answers your question. Okay. Our next question is from Jamie. Hey, Travis, I need your help. I have my fish in quarantine because of ick. I had a tang in quarantine and looked fine. So I didn't treat and then added it to my main tank and it was covered in ick by day two and then died two days later. My clowns started to show spots, so I pulled everyone, and I also have a new tang and a separate quarantine tank. Uh, I'm treating with copper and using a Hannah checker, but I'm getting high levels when I haven't uh, added all the recommended dosage yet. Is my Hannah checker broken? Is my copramine bad? I just got it at the beginning of the year. I put 15 drops in a 10-gallon tank and 40 drops in a 20-gallon. According to the directions, I should be adding twice that amount to reach the 0.5 dosage, but it's already reading that amount. I don't want to continue dosing and kill my fish, uh, but I also want to get rid of the disease. What should I do? I tested several times and getting the same results. Well, if you're using a Hannah checker and you're getting the same results, it's highly unlikely that there's something wrong with the Hannah checker. Now, you said you'd put drops in. I don't do the drop method. I simply I convert everything into a millimeter, a milliliters. You could even type in Google how many drops to how many milliliters, and you could convert that. Um, I never do the drop method because no drop is ever the same. Even if you have this fancy tip at the end of the bottle, it's never the same drop. You might squeeze too much one time, not enough the next. So you probably added too much, uh, which were bigger drops than they should have been. And uh, you're already reached the uh, level that you should be at with the Hannah checker. So I would definitely not add any more since you're already reading that amount. If you are really worried about your Hannah checker and you want to double check it, you could always, I believe you can get a calibration. You can on bulk resupply, I think you can get something where you can calibrate your uh, Hannah checkers to see if it's in the correct range, or you can just buy a new Hannah checker. But I would, I would do the calibration first because I know it's going to be a little bit less money, and um, you know, go that route. But I highly doubt that there's anything wrong with a Hannah checker. I think that your drop method is flawed. All right, so uh, yeah, always want to, and I just want to put this little, my little two cents in there. Uh, preventative treatment is always recommended for all, all quarantine. If the fish comes in, freaking flex in putting up 150 pounds on the bench and looks healthy as shit, you still need to put copper in there to make sure that, uh, you know, you're preventing, you know, the illness that he got from the, you know, the fish in the back. Okay. So, um, that was a horrible, horrible analogy. I'm not even editing that shit out. I don't care. Anyway, just do preventative treatment, put copper in the tank, put a half a dose, put your fish in there and then wait a few days, put, put the recommended dose in and then let them go through the quarantine process of two weeks. And then, put them through another two weeks of observation. So that's what I recommend you do. And uh, hopefully that answers your question, Jamie. All right, so moving on to our next one, which is from Robert. Hey, I have a couple questions I was hoping you could help. In one of your videos, you added a wooden air stone to your sump to bring up the pH. 
but does it have to be wooden? The next question is my elk is 13 and my calcium is 380. Some people tell me just to dose the calcium, but you keep saying not to do that. And at least that's what I, I thought you said. Anyways, what should I do? I dose a bionic two part. All right. So the first part and the uh, first question, uh, the wooden air stone, does it have to be wooden? No, you can put in a standard air stone, but make sure it's in the sump, maybe the refugium section where there's a baffle that can catch the bubbles. I've done this in places where you can't get a line in from outside. There's no windows. Maybe it's a closed basement and you're suffering from low pH. You can add a air stone to your sump to inject air into it to help elevate the pH. Again, you want to put it in something like your refugium where you have an opportunity to catch those bubbles before they get to your return section. Um, and I choose to use the wooden air stone because it's more porous. You get finer bubbles, finer bubbles, uh, go into the water a little bit easier and dissipate better than just having giant bubbles. Uh, you know, if you were just to put an airline at the bottom of the tank, you see giant bubbles coming up. But if you add an air stone, they're more finer. They kind of throw flow throughout the uh, tank. So, Yes, wooden air stone is what I would recommend. But then again, you know, you do whatever works best for you or whatever you have on hand. Anything's going to help. Now, the next part of the uh, question here is regarding your alkalinity being 13 and your calcium being 380. Now, I've never personally dosed the bionic two part. I know people that have, and it's basically the same thing. It's just generic two part. Now, when it comes to uh, your alkalinity being high, you have to figure out, first of all, why is it high like that? Is your salt already elevated and you're just dosing on top of it are you not dosing evil proportions is your dosing pump not calibrated correctly there's a reason why it's at 13 and if you're dosing you know equal parts of it exactly then that's not the issue the issue is what else is causing it to be there so I'd double check your salt maybe make new salt and figure out where your alkalinity might be at and then if you're if you're making salt and for whatever reason it's a bad batch and you're putting in 13 elk salt that comes with 350 calcium just because the you know it's not mixed properly or it's not a good batch and yeah that's going to definitely play a role in why your levels are off so double check your salt and if that's not the issue then double check your dosing method make sure that it's correct now to uh, fix this issue if all that stuff's working out and you're uh, dosing the you know equal amounts and your salt's fine then what i would do is i would increase the dose that means increase a little bit of your alkalinity and your calcium it's going to balance itself out uh, it doesn't work when you add one or more than the other they will balance themselves out I would first try, if your salt is good, I would first try to do a water change of 30% um, every other day for like the next week to help bring those levels down. If you're, you know, if your salt's naturally at 9 DKH and you're at uh, 380 uh, calcium, then it wouldn't hurt to do water changes over the next few days to help with that and then just make sure that you're um, dosing uh, an equal proportion. So yeah, hopefully that answers your questions. There's, there's other factors that can be involved that are just not in a three sentence um, question here that I would uh, be happy to ask and, and figure out what might be um, outs might be causing the problem but check everything that i talked about uh, but you should be fine as long as you're dosing equal parts all right okay next question hello there i'm one of your youtube followers from europe and i love your videos i have a question about dino have you ever dealt with this before if so what is your approach well yeah i gotta make a damn video on that uh totally forgot to make that video let me write that shit down now um Anyways, I started reefing like two years ago with a small 120 gallon tank, just a power head, some small homemade blue LEDs, live rock, and in a year's time, a tank grew and it was stunning uh, SPS. I upgraded the tank uh, with some radions, lights, protein skimmer, triton dosing, SPF growth and coloration was insane. And then like everybody, everyone in the hobby, I upgraded to a 600 liter bare bottom tank with everything since then. Um, then is one big nightmare heavy elk swings dino outbreak algae you name it i would like to hear your opinion on best solution for the tank back up and normal i ordered uv sterilizer hope this helps get rid of the dinos at least keep them under control okay so there's a whole damn video dedicated someday that i'm going to make for this and um that'd be awesome i would love to make that video but until then when it comes to fixing dino it's a lack of nutrients regardless of what anybody says i mean there are different strands of dino out, out there but most of them have to do with the lack of nutrients in your tank and that's why they're growing now um man i just man there's so much shit about dino but to pretty much sum it up if you can get the dino some of it all right there's if you just simply google dino identification you can pull some of that dino out and you can look under a microscope if possible you can buy a cheap one uh, i didn't personally do this but you can do it and you can identify the type of dino and it will give you the appropriate uh, a way of removing it but most methods 
all have to do with increasing your nutrients to get rid of dino. Now, when I got it in the 300 here, you guys knew that I was testing high levels of alkali um, Jesus, uh, nitrates and phosphates to kind of see the coloration difference. So I talked about it a thousand times. Anyway, when I went on my little mini vacation, which I didn't go anywhere, I just neglected the tank for a whole month and the nutrients plummeted. When that happened, I ended up getting a dino outbreak in the 300. It was pretty bad for a couple weeks, but I caught it early and took the appropriate um, approach. Now, what you first want to do is get your nitrates and phosphates up to an appropriate range. That means a 3 to 5 ppm of nitrates and uh, at least a 0 0.10 ppm of phosphates and you need to keep it there consistent consistent con bleh, 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 consistently i'm not even editing that shit out and all you have to do is uh, test every single day so you want to do your dosing uh, at night test 24 hours later before you dose your nitrates and phosphates again and you want to make sure that it's in the appropriate range giving it 24 hours to interact with the tank and then just dose as needed to keep within those levels the next thing you want to do is you want to manually remove it so if it's on your back glass go back there and scrape the back glass clean it off get it off out of the tank suck it up now what i did is i went ahead and i went in there with a, a razor blade i needed to clean the glass anyway so it kind of gave me an excuse to do it and i cleaned out the glass but i also siphoned out all that stuff into filter socks and i went through probably 10 or 15 filter socks worth of just junk in the tank that i cleaned off all the glass sucked it out from the rocks so you want to manually remove it as much as you can and that means every single day that doesn't mean you just go in when it starts to look bad that means you go in every day regardless of how bad it looks and you manually remove it wherever it might be go in there with a toothbrush clean your power heads take your power heads out for and clean them you know put them in vinegar and, and clean them and go through that go through that process and then just make sure that you're manually removing it as much as you can now the next thing you can do is add a uv sterilizer which you're um you already purchased which i did as well i already had one on there but i fixed the bulb because the bulbs were bad anyways and then i also added the second one which i've since removed because i don't really need it anymore and just using that will help kill and damage the cells of the dyno which will help the process next thing you can do is dose phytoplankton which has a lot of biodiversity and really dino really starts to take over the tank when you have a lack of biodiversity so when your nutrients plummet that means when you went to bare bottom you didn't have the same nutrients you have a different flow you have different setup uh and you're just you know you plummeted your nutrients or you're just not keeping them where you should be and that's where you're losing the biodiversity and that's when dino will come in and uh so just to kind of recap Increase your nutrients to uh, 3 to 5 ppm of nitrates and at least one, uh, 0 0.1 of uh, phosphates. Keep them there. Test every single day and stay on top of it. Next thing you want to do, add a UV sterilizer. Third, third thing you want to do is manually remove it every single day. Toothbrush, rock, scrubbing it, turkey base, or whatever you got to do. Get it off your corals. Get it off the rock structures. Use filter socks. If you don't have filter socks in your system, you need to use them because it's going to catch a ton of those. And you want to change those every day regardless if they're overflowing or not and you want to be consistent with all this for uh, or at least until it's completely gone now you will i will say once you get your nutrients up and you get the majority of the dinos under control by manually removing them your system's uh, biodiversity will come back and it will uh, take over and really start processing nutrients appropriately and the dino will fade away it just will uh, my 300 is living proof that the method works but again there are different strands of dino and i i did a lot of research on this and i can't remember dog shit right now because it's not in front of me but you could always do uh, like i said the microscope and you can identify it and figure out the strand which has a specific approach that might be a little bit different than what i have but overall for 90 percent of the dino out outbreaks my method is going to work just fine so that video will be out someday and uh yes hopefully uh, you can get it under control and congratulations for coming to bare bottom as it should be all right later okay so let's go to move on to our last question of the video hello my name is not going to pronounce that i am venturing into my first saltwater tank uh, 300 gallons though i've had fresh water since i was in the third grade so your first tank is a 300 gallon tank for salt water that's awesome congrats on that um and you said since the third grade so um, hopefully you're not in fourth grade because they wouldn't give you very long to to be good at the hobby anyways uh is there a rule of thumb uh, as to how long you should bleach cure uh use live rock or perhaps a change in the water or rock that uh signifies it's done okay all right, so when it comes to using used live rock from another tank, so I'm assuming you bought this tank and maybe they had rock with it and you're using it for the setup. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and I've made this mistake already, so we'll get into that in a second. Every, everything that that 
person who owned that tank before or owned that rock before, every mistake they made, every time they overfed, every time they overdosed something, every time they had an algae outbreak or any mistake that ever made is sitting in that rock. Okay, so maybe they ran a high nutrient tank for the longest time and they're taking it down because they can't deal with the algae outbreak and they just happen to give you a deal on the rock because it was freaking part of the tank. And that's exactly what I did. Um, and you go ahead and plop that shit in your tank and you end up having algae problems for months and months and months until you do enough water changes and waste enough money to get rid of the algae problem. Now, what I would say is if you're using used live rock, for one, I wouldn't. But if it's your only choice and the only thing you're going to do, then just do it. But you need to cure the rock ahead of time. That means get a 55-gallon barrel or as many as it takes to fill it up. And then go ahead and put a uh, pump at the bottom. Put the water through the top. You can see how I cure rock for my 300-gallon in that playlist. And you want to cure the rock with salt water heater and flow. Now, how long is it going to take? I don't know. It depends on the rock and its history. If uh, you know you, you let it run and you come and test your nitrates and phosphates in that water in a couple weeks and it's sky high then do a water change come back in another couple weeks test it if your nutrients are still high do another water change 50 percent. you continue this until you're an appropriate level of nutrients um again that's going to be between three to five ppm of nitrates and that uh 0.05 to even 0.15 of phosphates and you could be a little bit higher because it is just you know rock and there isn't a you know ton of stuff going on with it. but i would not be getting anything if you're getting like super high levels of nitrates and super ridiculous levels of phosphates and you're just curing it then you need to keep curing it until those levels come down if the water looks anything but clear during the curing process you need to keep it in there longer and um, it's just going to depend on how bad the rock is it could take months and months and months to cure it uh, if i was you i would buy dry pucani or a reef saver rock and i would cure it because i know it's clean i know where it's been and i would cure it and the same process but make sure that you know it won't have to be as long because you don't know necessarily what's going on with the rock that you just purchased so um my phone is buzzing that's annoying anyway just cure the rock and when your levels come down you can go ahead and put it in the main display uh i don't know how long it's going to take i can't give you an answer on that but i would not add it to your tank if the levels are are pretty high during that uh, that process all right so that's it for all the questions we are at uh, what 23 minutes 23 and a half something like that um that's about it i'll see you guys later i gotta get done with this now so i can go start aquascaping this new shallow reef and which is hilarious you guys thought i already did it on instagram well, you guys are you guys are weird you think you really think i would just put three rocks in this tank and call it a day it's crazy you guys don't know me anyways that's it for the video i will talk to you guys later and if i don't see you yeah i'll see you guys monday all right peace